Okay, the Holy Spirit has uh, given me some notes I'd like to go over regarding the 2024 election. Although the uh, present war in Ukraine is at the point of great possibilities for the war of Armageddon, the 2024 election in America must take place. Prophecy is not yet fully complete. Son of Satan must rise to fulfill all things. Was, is not, and is. The past election loss of Donald Trump and the defeating of all criminal cases against him sets the stage for even greater polarization of the citizens of the world, causing great uproars of the seas, principalities of the four corners of the earth. And I believe it's all set up by the devil. All of it. And it's just given him more power. Humanity is number six. All things accomplished after the sixth seal, trumpets and bowls, or trumpets rather, not bowls, but the sixth seal and trump seals and trumpets, the delay is for the blooming after the 70 years. Okay, Revelation 9, 12. The two woes begin. Joe Biden is a sleeper cell rocking America and the nations to sleep while the nation is given over carrying out and is given over and uh, the plans of New World Order are being carried out. Political intensity, polarization among the people will ensue when the 2024 election campaign becomes more intense. If Donald Trump runs to the end or great calamity occurs. So in Jeremiah, regarding, when I read here in Jeremiah 50, this really brings, I can see Donald Trump in this, as I see Vladimir Putin in a back of 111. His mind shall change, and then shall, shall he impute his power unto his God. I believe that's going to trigger Armageddon. In Jeremiah 50, 43 to 44, beginning here in um, 41, says, Behold, the people come from the north. And a great nation. So if Donald Trump is elected, I can really, really see this happening. And it really doesn't matter who's elected, but I know for a fact that Donald Trump is a little horn in, in the scriptures. And if he does, if he ends up getting elected, could be the very last election. Very probable. The older people comes from the north, a great nation, China, Russia, and many kings shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. They're the coasts. Where the coast is that they're sitting and listening to instructions. They're, they have the demons behind them and the men with microphones in front of them. They're sandwiched. It's, it's, a, it's a bread pile. And they're choosing sides. Right? These kings are being promised seats. They're being promised liberty. And they're all Assyrian kings, and they uh, and these are from the from the west or from the from the east, and they're stirring. And they shall hold the bow and the lance. They are cruel, and this is the, the when when they go to war. And I see here, I see the Chinese military, especially when it says this, they are cruel. And, and look at the, the Russian military. I think the Chinese military is even worse. And will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses. Everyone put in array, like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon. And so this daughter of Babylon represents all the inhabitants of the earth. You see here in 44. The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands, this is where I see Donald Trump, the king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands waxed feeble, anguish took hold of him, and pangs of a woman in travail. Okay, I've, I see this, and I can see it, like in, this, in light vision. You know, God made us all in weakness, and uh, you know that his life has just been um, threatened by Iran because of what happened with Suleimani. In verse 44, here, here's the verse here, it says, Behold, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of the Jordan, 
the Bible says that if you cannot, you know, watch over yourself and have victory in your own backyard, how will you fare in the thickets of the Jordan? And these are the, these are, they come from the Jordan unto the habitation of the strong, but I will make them suddenly run away from her. And who is that chosen man that I may appoint over her? For who is like me? And who will appoint me to time? Well, this is dual. This speaks about Jesus Christ. This also speaks regarding the worthless shepherd, which is ultimately the king of Assyria, which is Lucifer, Satan, the devil. Who will appoint me to time? I mean, who am I going to be pleased with? Who am I going to want to see stand before me? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? And he's talking about, he says in Ezekiel, are you the ones I spoke of long ago that you should come and, 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 and uh, uh, pollute my land and trespass into my land? Who is that shepherd that will stand before me? And he's talking about the, the worthless shepherd. And let, may, may his eye be, be, be darkened, let right eye be darkened, his arm be, be useless, be withered. And so that's the right, that means of himself being blind and his hand not able to do anything for himself. So basically when, when God is speaking about the Babylonians, he's talking about also those that have two horns like a lamb but speak as a dragon. Because if you have one foot in the world and one foot in heaven, to God, if you're not a first fruit, you're Babylon. So here in verse uh, chapter 51, rather, Here in the, our, I want to read this. This is, uh, is this? Let's see here. Yeah, this is 51 and Jeremiah 51 and 27, 32. And 32 says to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end and that the passages are stopped. And the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are frightened. So the reeds, once again, are, are the poor. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Assyria of the west, and the, and, and the one of the east, they are responsible, you know, for degenerating the poor, for the condition of the, of the people. Here in verse 40 says, I will bring them, I will bring them down like the lambs to the slaughter, like rams and he goats. So the king of Assyria, King Nebuchadnezzar, there's two Nebuchadnezzars, as the Holy Spirit showed me several, quite a few years ago, one of the reports that I was writing. They are responsible for these lambs being in the slaughter. As he programs and projects once again the people, his own people, that dwell that he's ruling over so God projects them as well and here speaks regarding the lambs these are the lambs the poor are the lambs they're bringing the lambs they're bringing the sheep to the slaughter okay so God said feed my lambs feed my sheep and then he goes feed my lambs well the lambs are are younger than the sheep the rams are stronger than the goats it's like rams with the he goats the rams could, would, would be like, uh, uh, you know, the, the Assyrian of the world against the goats, the greater ones, the demons as well, against the lesser ones, the captives that are in hell. Humanity is being treated very poorly. And what's happening with the children, once again, God is not happy with it. And what they're doing is they're trying to save themselves from facing the judgment. And, but, they, and, but at the same time, they want war. Th there has to be war in order for the phoenix to rise. And so that's why they say in Revelation, they go into caves and dens, they say rocks fall on us. And that's the gods that they're serving, the fourth dimensional realm. In Jeremiah, here Donald Trump is a, is, is a worthless shepherd, the greatest example of the son of Satan because He's, he's slaughtering his own people, but his, the people he's slaughtering, they, they belong to Christ. It's a Christian nation. Same thing with Canada. And Isaiah 14 says that very thing. You, you've killed your own people. It doesn't matter whether they're Christian or not. He's still doing it. When you're doing it to, 
to a child that belongs to Christ. And that's when God will rise up to the prey more. Because God is avenging the death of Jesus Christ. That, those are his first fruits. Those are the people that surrender to him and that are righteous before him. Because the Spirit of God lives in them. He's committing treason against his own country. And his supporter, so the, the, the highest elect, who are knowingly supporting such an agenda, the Lamb and the Shepherd. In Jeremiah 50, once again, is dual. Jesus Christ and Luc against Lucifer, Satan, the devil. The fourth horse. Because it's, it's right now, the, uh, the creation is undergoing a, a tremendous um, encounter with the fourth dimension, the third and fourth generation, the four, third and fourth dimensions. They're married. The clay is marrying together. If Donald Trump has victory, and if he's elected uh, the, um, as uh, president, uh, he's going to fulfill, like the, the fulfillment of Revelation 13 is going to be something like never before. And once again, we're going to experience the three woes because it's going to come back to, to, to a new seven-year cycle in 2024. 2024 begins a new seven-year cycle. 2023 is the last, is the seventh day, according to that seven-year cycle. So the indictment is setting up this, the, the stage for Revelation 13 for the next round of elections. The Reich, the, the Reich cycle, as I call it, is, is the same like Hitler had a cycle as well. This, the, the Reich cycle reaches fullness of spirit and the flesh, of the flesh and spirit. So once this last election is made, because that's what the 2024 election is going gonna, is gonna to be, and I actually prophesied that Biden would be elected using Revelation uh, 13 and Revelation 11. I actually prophesied with this, these verses that he would be re-elected because this is the other beast that rose up after Donald Trump, which was uh, Joe Biden. And this is going to be fulfilled. And he continues for 40 and two months, three and a half years. Is it going to be that, that long? Is it going to be 2027? three and a half years, which are, this is the, the fourth day. This is the center of the lampstand, 2027. So he's going to be inaugurated here in 2025 if he goes three and a half years or 42 months, if this is the seven-year cycle. But I'm not saying it is, because the seven-year cycles lead to different things, right? Like number 56 is the cycle of the beast but actually this is the thing if you take number because eight times seven is 56 and so you're going by the menorah and you want to do the cycles of the numbers well you, you go with the menorah and, and and it returns number eight will return every 56 years using two menorahs because you have a 14 year cycle between the trumpets you go 14 years you can do all those Find out all the returns. Well, if you begin, I think it's 36, from AD 1, from 1 AD, right? You go 1 AD, so you go 36. Just go 36 times, I think it's 36, 56. I did this before. It's 2016. So 56 years times 36 from AD 1 brings you to 2016. That's when Donald Trump started running. That's when he was elected. 2015 is when he started running, when he appeared, as the prophecy that God spoke to me, that the lawless man of perdition would appear within three and a half years. And he did. When I made that prophecy, and he showed me that prophecy as well. Lots of prophecies like that. Once this election, like I said before, the for now on, it's going to be whoa, 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 judgment, whoa, whoa, whoa. For now on. It's all darkness. This is a seven and three year cycle chart. It's also regarding the one tenth offering because there's a ten year cycle here as well. A lot of cycles in this chart. And what I want to just quickly go over is just to show some 
the uh, continuity. Here is a resurrection right here. And then here's another resurrection here, two blocks down from there, two blocks down from here is another resurrection. And then there's another resurrection two blocks down from there. We have a resurrection over here, 2030 and 2031. 2031 is the end of the timeline, 2031.5, 20, 20, and then uh, it would be another year after that. That would be the end of the timeline of this specific seven year cycle. So what I'm trying to, what I want to show here quickly is we have a 10 year cycle from 2020, which is the first day of a seven year cycle. And this is the one where the Lord said to me, the seven years have begun. 2020 is another 10 year cycle. So this is the one tenth of the herd, which is passing under the judgment every 10, uh, it's uh, one tenth would be also the 10 year cycle. And it could be any number. 110 is the finger of God, which is Jesus Christ. He is the 10th, the tenth, 110th. Tenth. He is the Omar. And also in Numbers speaks about the 110th uh, of the offering there as well. And here in 2024, what the Holy Spirit has shown me is that, and so, oh, we have a three year cycle here, and you can see all the four, five, six, seven year, year cycles there as well. Here in 2024 is going to be, is the first day of a new seven year cycle. It begins a new seven year cycle. So if we look in uh, in Daniel, in Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 says that he will confirm a covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, once again, he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And so we're looking at the, the COVID, we're looking at all the overspreading of the abominations that's happening after that three and a half years, uh, which happened uh, in the first cycle, the cycle of, we have the menorah here, of 2016. So here's 2016 right here, and right here. This is 2017, right, once again, 2017, in the, right here is the first, day of the week, 2017, and then we have Donald Trump is inaugurated here, and he's elected in November of 2016, and then we have the Jubilee year, and the council, the, the cabinet members, are being, everything's being sh uh, shifting around to uh, eat for the, getting ready for the 70th year, which begins the 70th year, and then the produce in 2019.5, which was the COVID back, uh, COVID, um, uh, policy procedures and protocols and so here we have the uh, 2020 which is the 10th year according to the seven year that seven year cycle which was the passing through the judgment and then we have 2021 which is the, the first second and third woe now for now on it's going to be whoa 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 they're all going to be woes it's all going to be great tribulation woes for now on. And so we're going into another three days of darkness, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027. Now, in Daniel chapter 9 is three and a half years. So the three and a half years was the ministry of Jesus Christ. So here is 2024, 25, 26, and 26 and a half brings it to 2027, uh, beginning the winter house. And that is that three-year cycle of Daniel once again because it's repetitive continual and then what we're going to have is the last three and a half years which is for the church to accomplish in great tribulation so what I'm proposing is that that is when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return because he is avenging the church he's, he's, he's coming he, he's uh, uh, he's coming to avenge the church after his ministry, after his resurrection, then he comes and he judges. So it, that's a possibility, nobody knows. It could be a different seven year cycle where the Holy Spirit returns you know, in a different seven year cycle. He could return anytime, right? But 
and not any time because things, certain things have to be accomplished before it returns, and that is a lawless man of perdition needs to be made manifest. And so we are looking at a great probability that that will be accomplished in 2024. That could be, I don't like to say this, it's difficult for me to say, I have to hesitate every time, but the word, there could be an assassination uh, because, uh, once again, uh, Donald Trump life has been threatened because of what happened with Soleimani, and there's also been visions of him being assassinated as well. They say he has a double, and that he's going to rise from the dead. That way, that remains to be seen, but those are all probabilities, and very probable that that is going to happen. That's a, that, that is a possibility, and we have to keep our eyes peeled. The most important thing is understanding the possibilities of the times, knowing that we are that close, that we have to be ready. That's the first and foremost and most important thing. I want to go over the cycle regarding, this is really interesting. Uh, the Holy Spirit had me go through, uh, we did the 56-year cycle. The 56-year cycle is the cycle of the eighth king. The 28-year cycle is the cycle of the Reich. Now, if you look, if we go from 19, 1933, when Hitler was elected. This I did this a few years ago. And if you add 28 years, so we add 28 years is 1961. Very interesting year. This is the trumpet year as well. And then that's when Russia released that amazing, that, that huge super sonic bomb. And then, which shook the earth. And then we have another 28 years, which is 1989, which is another prophetic year that Holy Spirit showed me. And then from 29, another 89, another 28 years is 2017, which is the inauguration of Donald Trump. Now, if you take from the election of JFK, JF uh, Kennedy, JFK, John Kennedy, uh, you'll see that he was elected in 1960. And so from 1960, 1960, plus 28 brings it to 1988, plus another 28 brings it to 2016, and that's when Donald Trump is now elected. So Donald Trump took the place of J.F. Kennedy. If you take 28 years from that year, understanding too that um, the stronghold of the presidency, of the works of the Illuminati, of the works of the elite government uh, in America after they assassinated uh, J.F. Kennedy, that was a stronghold. That's when the stronghold began. And that's when they really covered it up and they really started moving towards the movement of the New World Order, covering up that assassination. And uh, their condition grew grossly worse because of that what happened. And so um, the Messiah now regarding will return says in, uh, once again, in... Uh, Revelation 13, 1 to 5, says that the beast will rule for 42 months. And so once again, from 24, when this is going to be the inauguration of the North American election, that will begin another 42 months, and that will take that timeline to uh, 2027, which is the, uh, which is the fourth horse. So, flesh, soul, spirit, and fourth horse. So those are just a few points that I wanted to make uh, known. It's a possible scenario and something that I think is we should be watching. And I think that's all the notes that I have. And But once again, more importantly, to be ready. Our spiritual lives with Jesus Christ. The next thing I wanted to also mention, I have more notes here. I gotta find these notes. 2024 election. I've, I have lots of notes. I have lots of notes on this. I just wanted to go and uh, get this regarding the seven years. Yeah, so the seven years, um, I, I should bring up a Le Leviticus 26. So I have my, I have a Bible here in Leviticus 26. Okay, this is what's going to happen in 2024. Being the, if 
2024 is the last seven year cycle. Once again, it can begin anytime uh, at a different time. There's many different places where this can begin. According to my timeline, it's been extremely accurate regarding the COVID, regarding uh, the, um, the three years of Leviticus, the 70 years, the Jubilee year, the Sabbath year, okay, 2016, Sabbath, Jubilee, and 70th year, and then 2019 is the COVID. Now, if you take from the assassination, not the assassination, oh yeah, from the assassination of J.F. Kennedy, and you, that's three years later, it was, it was 19, I believe it was 1963, that brings you to 2019. That's the pestilence. And that's the reason for the pestilence, is those kind of acts. So, uh, that is this seven year cycle, that, and this one goes to, um, I believe, it, it's, it's those trumpets, and the trumpet sounds, it's actually, yeah, it's in, uh, it's from, uh, uh, it's 98 years from 1933. And this is what the Holy Spirit showed me. It's not because it's the, it was the election of, of uh, Hitler, but 1933 uh, plus 98 is 2031, okay? And so this, once again, is a New Year cycle here, 2031. That's the seven-year cycles. When the Holy Spirit spoke to me in 2012, December 25, he said, the seven years have begun. And then all these prophecies came afterwards as I started looking, searching, and on, on to this day. So 2024 plus seven years, we look in Leviticus 26. This is the tribulation. The last seven years of great tribulation. This is when it begins here in Leviticus 26. In verse 26 and 27, I believe, is the fifth seven and says, If in spite of this you will not hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you in fury and chastise you myself sevenfold for your sins. And, and, and if you read what happens, what happens here, this is the end times. And then it talks about hell, the land having its rest and its Sabbath in verse 33. And, uh, and then so on and so forth. I'm sure that gets into the millennial age as well. But these two verses, and in spite of this, if you will walk, not hearken to me. So there's four seven-year cycles, which brings the timeline to 28 years. 7 times 4 is 28, plus one more is 35, which is half of 70. And these numbers, once again, are being condensed, they're being used to the very end. Three woes, you know, three, uh, three kings, three uh, ages, three covenants, and then it goes to three uh, years and three months, three days, and three seconds. So here in, in uh, Leviticus 20, 26, God says he'll do that, he'll do it himself. What, what, what happens, and he says that here as well, says that by this discipline you are not turned to me, but while contrary to me, then I will also walk contrary to you, and I myself will smite you sevenfold for your sins, and I'll bring the sword upon you. So this is like the COVID, this is the one seven year cycle past, and now God says he's gonna do it again himself, the fifth time, and it's going to be this what's going to be happening. So what the Holy Spirit showed me that in 2024, we're looking at these seven year cycles. And so from 2024 would be the last seven year cycle of the timeline that he gave me. So that means that in 2024 would be the last seven year cycle of Leviticus 26. And so you can read it, it is absolute devastation says that you shall eat the flesh of your sons. Well, that was the policy, procedure, and protocols of, of the COVID. It's also the drag, the dead body dragging kings and the dead body dragging queens in the public schools that are taking over the children, the youth, uh, the kindergartens. And you shall eat the flesh of your daughters, and I will destroy your high places and cut down your incense altars and cast your dead bodies upon the dead bodies of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. 
and I will lay your cities waste and will make your sanctuaries desolate and I will not smell in your, your pleasing odors as God says. Not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of God. And he who says he's going to devastate the land. The enemies who settle in it shall be astonished. And these settlers is speaking of immigration. They'll be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the nations and see the sword among you and your land shall be a desolation and your city shall be a waste. So he's handing over the people. And, uh, and he says, then the land shall enjoy its Sabbath. So it's done. So then we have the next age because hellfire is that as well. The thousand years of separation is for the land to have its rest and for uh, the marriage supper of the land. But, but this is first covenant. And so this is also speaking regarding the land having its rest even every, every seven days. And all this devastation was to make up for all those times lost in the past where the laws weren't being upheld. The days will be shortened. There's no prediction regarding what's going to happen. But one thing for sure, God is going to shake the heavens and the earth. He's going to shake it in third and fourth dimension. And God will touch the land and it will melt after the 70 years, which has already happened. And he's touching that. He's touching the land with the gospel. 70 years set up the people for all judgments after the 70 year trumpet sounds. You're in the time of delay unto the second coming. The time is now to uh, seek the Lord. Really, really give everything to God. It's so crucial. Break the, uh, the unwillingness and give Him everything and be ready. So I hope you were uh, inspired and God bless you. Have, a, have an amazing communion with God as you search the scriptures. Amen.